I remember you came across like uh, the field and you said if there is earthworms in here, I'll start the farm. You took the thing and there was earthworm. Yeah. Yeah. We are in a national park, so we ask the park to tell us what trees we should plant. And the idea is bio-intensive, so we planted like 3,000 trees on the farm and we did a pond, so it's like biodiversity zones. It's a very popular crop here in France. Like old people, they, they really enjoy it, and chefs also really enjoy it. On va s'en faire au barbecue. Ah uh, ouais. Hein? I remember when I visited JM in 2018, and I took a lot of tools in my uh, luggage. So this, in, I took it in the plane, <laughs> and I'm really happy because it's amazing. You see, the controller boxes are so different than back home. You know. You want to taste it? I don't, I've never seen this before. Tom, this is really, really nice. <laughs> ah, panais. C'est quoi panais en anglais, non? Is it the same as parsley? Parsnip is in the parsley family? Yeah, I guess. So today's a really special moment for me. After all these years, this is the first time that I'm actually visiting a farm that I've helped create in France some years ago. Une Ferme du Perche is the name of the farm. It's a really amazing place. And today I'll show you around. We'll meet Tom, who has been working with me on this project for a long time. And it's the first time that I get to leave my farm in the summer to visit France in this setup. It's really amazing. The birds are everywhere. It's a beautiful place and I wanted to show it to you. So not sure if everybody knows this, but France is really where market gardening all started. And for hundreds of years, like the 1800s, the 1900s, and the first part of the 20th century, Paris, was, which was a big city at, at the times, like three million people, was fed year round by market gardeners that were farming a few acres. Highly productive market gardens, up to six, seven successions per year in a climate that's not that warm. You know, Paris is warm, but it's not the tropics. They have winters. And for all these years that I've been learning and researching about market gardening, it all points down back to France. And so as a French speaking person, for me, I have a lot of friends here. I have a lot of people through the years that I've met. And at one point, I've just had the opportunity to really settle and create a space where I can teach and show what we do back home, but in here in France. And so this farm is that. It's a really special place and it's really highly productive. And there's a, there's a couple of features that I've, that I've wanted to share with you guys so that you see what a French market garden looks like. So one of the first thing that's really amazing from this place is that, you know, I've, I've been picking up pieces of the puzzle of how to be a really good market gardener through these old French books, but a lot of it was lost. And it was actually Elliot Coleman who visited France in the 70s and in the 80s and learned from old market gardeners themselves that took back a lot of this knowledge, which was passed on to me and a lot of others. And then for me to write my book, The Market Gardener in French, and to come in the early, I think I came here in uh, 2012 for the first time, and I was you know, explaining my story and, and showing what the work that we were doing at my home farm. And then ever since, there's been a pickup of this, whole, this old way of growing. And so this market garden is really very familiar to mine because they apply a lot of the teaching that I give in, in, in my work. But there's a lot of things that are kind of different that are really nice to kind of look at. So one of the things that's really cool about this farm is the hedgerows. Just like at FQT farm, uh, we've designed hedgerows, flowering hedgerows. You can see them, they're really mixed. They're really young. So different from FQT farm where you see the whole thing. These have been planted only a few years ago. But that's really, in my opinion, where permaculture really meets market gardening with these guilds of hedgerows that are planted. They'll be acting as windbreaks, but they're also acting as just bringing a lot of beauty and a lot of biodiversity. And so later on, we'll talk with Tom about the species that are here, 
but you can see that they're everywhere between the field blocks and I think that's something really cool. Okay, so I'm with Tom Rial. Tom is, uh, is uh, the project manager here, the owner of the farm. Uh, we've started this project together four years ago? Yeah, in 2018. Tell us more about the farm, who you are quick, and then we'll jump into the garden. Uh, I'm a dreamer who wanted to become a farmer and I asked JM for help and now it's become reality, I think. Yeah, <laughs> he came to Montreal and then we hung out yeah. And at one point, uh, this was family estate of his. And uh, we talked a long time and he decided that this could be a farm yeah. that I would get involved with. Yeah, I remember you came across like uh, the field and you said, if there is earthworms in here, I'll start the farm. You took the thing and there was earthworms. Yeah. yeah. And I did do it. <laughs> yeah. So this is like the fourth year of the farm, third yeah. year? Yeah, yeah, it's the fourth year, but it's only the third year in production. Okay. And we, we are really happy with... Uh, what we can do here, so, yeah. Okay, the first thing I wanted you to tell me about is these beans that yeah. I've never really seen before. Yeah, they're not they're not known in uh, America. It's a very uh, Mediterranean thing. So okay. It's from Morocco, south of France, and you, you have to cook them. Oh yeah, you open okay, this. this one, this one wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, because it's the end of the season, so it's an early crop. Yeah. And uh, right now it's, uh, it's the end, it's over. And you yeah, were, you have the last one. <laughs> you were telling me that some of the chefs that you yeah. work with really like these. Yeah, they love it, especially if it's early season. Yeah. Uh, you have to plant it like in October and you get it like first crop of the season. And it's really good. It's like beans, like, you know, small beans. Yeah. But it's different. Like you have to cook it. It's really nice. Yeah. You wanna Don't eat it raw though. <laughs> you want to name good. drop? One of the chefs that likes these beans for you? Uh, Pierre Gagnère, Michel Bras. Jean Bert, they really nice. like stuff. Yeah, they buy a lot of it. Yeah, mm. Tom has a really good reputation and he works with super high-end chefs. I don't know. That's <laughs> good stuff. Less than in Montreal. <laughs> Different. <laughs> yes. So, <coughs> good. tell me. So this, this, we put it in mesclin. This is awesome because you can put it in mesclin in the summer because you have a lot of, a lot of uh, spring and autumn crop for the yeah. mesclin that you taught me, but in the summer they just go flower. So yeah, it's pretty good. It, it adds texture to the mesclin and it's, it's really nice. And what do you call it? Pourpier. Pourpier, like this is the weed that grows in our garden. Yeah. But this is like pourpier that's really tasty. Yeah. More like... Um, more like... C'est um, quoi la quelque chose vert là? La cléton. No, not the cléton, the... La mash. La mash. It tastes yeah. more like mash, you know? Yeah, it has it that kind mash. of like this. How do you call mash in... Mash, I think, is mash in, in English. Yeah. So it's you like... Chris? <laughs> it's like a summer mash, but it, yeah, density. And it's really heavy. Yeah, it's really heavy, so it's so a it's cash, good, uh, cash good, crop. Good for uh, the salad mix. And no weeds, you know? Yeah, really nice. So you seed it with... Uh, you, you seed it with uh, six row or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, with the jeng. The jeng. The jeng, yeah. Five row. Cool. Five row two times. I mean, it's still like we don't know the, the right density, like, um, but this one seems to be better than the other, the previous one, but we were going to figure it out, you know. I like it. Nice. Bon, là, la celtus, elle est vraiment trop montée, quoi. <laughs> Parsnip, this is an un unusual crop, and I usually don't see it midsummer. So it was planted really early or fall? Yeah, it was planted uh, really early, not in the fall. But uh, it's a very popular crop here in France. Yeah. Like old people, they, they really enjoy it. And chef also really enjoy it. Okay. Uh, but you usually let it grow for the whole season. Like this one is pretty small. Yeah. But we figured out like, why not sell it this way? Like we do with all the so crops. You, you so you pick every week, you'll pick some and then yeah. you'll leave the others to grow more. Yeah, like it's not going to sell at the market, but the, the chefs uh, at this season, nobody uh, has this, so I yeah. really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Parsnip, I think you do um, mashed, the, you know, like mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the traditional recipe here in France. It's really good. 
But then you have to direct seed it, and uh, us, we only have the free row, so we have to seed it by hand. We're not really used to that, but it works. Good. Nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Tom, this is really, really nice. Yeah, so this it was... Uh, this is not in the masterclass, so we had to figure it out by ourselves. And uh, it's really a real cash crop, like people just love the, the strawberries. There's nothing to do about it, they just love it. Whoa, wow, wow. And so, yeah, you know, like you put 20, it makes 250 grams and you sell it like five euros. And that's the price, you know, that's even the conventional price. So yeah, it just sells like you have, you cannot, it's one of these crops. You, you can have more and more and more, it's just going to sell, you know. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Did you calculate the amount of revenue you make per bed on mm -hmm. a... Right now it's about a thousand, but it's not over yet, so... A thousand euro per bed? Yeah. One bed? Yeah. So this caterpillar... It's a, it's a first year. The first year it doesn't uh, produce as much as the second year. So... So we'll next year? Now. Yeah, we'll see next year. And this year's a good season here for... Yeah, but we, have, we had a lot of sun, so... Yeah, so, so they've really grown. They're really tasty. Yeah, they're really good. Do you know the variety that you use? Yeah, it's Si Jose, Si Florette, and uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, is, Charlotte like a, is like the famous one. Yeah, and the other ones are like new organic ones. Yeah. But they're, they're the ones that produce twice a year. Okay. Like strawberries, they can produce just in the, in the spring. Yeah. Or once in the spring, once in the summer. And this is our first harvest, so it's going to produce again. Like it's going to stop and then produce again. But I don't know when it's going to stop. So much flowers, you know? It's amazing. <laughs> Still the parsnip. <laughs> hey everyone, quick interruption. I hope you're enjoying this tour. Uh, Une Ferme du Perche is amazing. It's uh, my, one of my favorite places in the world. I've spent a lot of time there. And I want to invite you all to a workshop on January 16th on the art of profitable farming. A lot of the insights that went into creating Une Ferme du Perche a lot of the insights about how we manage FQT Farm, uh, some of the other projects that I've been involved with will be shared there and then. It's, a, it's really about improving your bottom line in farming. So it's free, it's online, you can register to it. All the information is on the link below. Really excited about it. I hope to see you there. Not taking much more of the time. Back to the tour. JM out. Tom, mm -hmm. tell me about this experiment that you guys are running here with that hemp. The idea was to put the hemp sheet and then compost over and then seed over it. Yeah, it, it, it works really well. Like here there was... Um, comment tu dis une tempête? And there was a lot of rain that came down. Yeah, so it really works. But here there was a lot of rain that came down uh, violently. So it threw all the seeds away. But usually it works. It's really a good technique. But it's costly. Mm. That's the problem. Okay. So I'm going to stick with the old uh, compost uh, technique, I think. Yeah, the farm is nice, eh? Ouais, c'est bien. Hein? A lot of birds. Yeah. Something that perhaps North Americans people don't know, but in France, to be certified organic, you cannot heat the greenhouse, correct? Uh, we don't really know. Like some people think we don't, you, you cannot. Some people think you can. It's not really clear, clear but uh, I think you can do it if it's uh, reno renewable energy. But what is renewable energy, you don't really know. So. But us, we don't, we don't heat. So okay. it's really common not to heat in, in, here in France. Okay. Even in our region, Normandy, where you have uh, a freeze and so on, all that stuff. But still, you're doing a lot of interesting technique. This, I see that you're cross planting the cucumbers. Yeah. yeah. And so you have your first one, and then yeah. once this one gets to a point, you plant another one, and then it's gonna. Yeah. And what's interesting is that the beans are gonna die also. Yeah. So where they're gonna die, this is gonna die, and this is gonna grow more, even if there's less sunlight, you know? So I think, yeah, we we didn't plan this, but yeah, it's, we got lucky. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then you see your eggplants are doing really nice. Yeah, Good four stuff. heads. Four heads, like in the masterclass? Yes. Good. Exactly like in the masterclass. 
So yeah, the, the difference between uh, Quebec, America and uh, here is that us, when you heat the soil, uh, when you heat the, the greenhouse with uh, the gas, us, we, do, we put a, a clear tarp on the soil and it, do, it does a greenhouse effect times two and it heats the soil a lot. So like in February, the soil is at, at uh, 20 degrees. Yeah. So we plant the tomatoes and then we put uh, nets, P, uh, P17, yeah. P17 nets. But the problem is that when you start to do this, you cannot yeah, you put, the, put nets, the nets anymore. So you need to have like a solution for that also. Yeah. So we need a small heating system just to keep it out of freeze. You know, a lot of this is really kind of somehow typical because this is how we do it and this is what I teach. But this is how we do this it. This is how we do it. <laughs> but without any heat, it's a different, yeah. it's a different thing. And this is this is definitely successful. You see, the plants are really healthy. It looks good. The density is there. The white plastic is also there. It's covering the soil. You know, there's. The humidity is there. Yes. Yeah, this is the best we had so far. So yeah, it's a good I'm, season. We're pretty proud. Yeah. Yeah. Two heads. I like it. Station. <laughs> you see, the controller boxes are so different than back home. You know, this is looks like a Soviet <laughs> Soviet controller yeah, box. Yeah, we're a bit more Soviet than you guys. <laughs> So this one is heated for the nursery or not even? Uh, it used to be heated with uh, gas, like yeah. you said. Yeah. But it wasn't a winning strategy for us. Like we got the bills at the end of it the year. It was too expensive. Like Ten thousand dollars and stuff. So we decided to heat it in another way. So we have electric um, things that put heat on this tarp. Yeah. And then we put nets. On here, so it's only this kind of this uh, area over there that's heated. And in France, like electricity is less expensive than gas. Okay. Not not the same as you guys. So, and it works so far. But we still have the gas thing in case it, it freezes. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it works so far. I mean, it's not the season of the nursery right now, but it's pretty empty. Yeah, so here you see you have um, cables that are heated. It heats the tarp, and then we just have to put the plants over there, put the nets, and let's go. Yeah. These are 200s? No, 150 and 100. Okay. Yeah, really good job. And these, the, this is the electric yeah. mats. Yeah. We put them off in the summer because this is too hot, you know, the yeah. black thing. Yeah. What's this? Do you know? Ça c'est du plantain corne de cerf pour le mesclant aussi. This is for the salad mix. Yeah. Can you want to taste it? I don't. I've never seen this before. I found it at Bruno's house. Bruno. Bruno Queron. Bruno Queron, yeah. a really good grower from France. Mm. He also sells a lot of chefs, Bruno. Eh? Yeah. So. I haven't put them in the field yet, but you know, it just grows like this in the same form. Okay, so they'll be a bit bigger and then... We'll... Yeah, but you cut it like more if you want to put it in the mesclant, maybe. Okay. I don't know yet. Okay, nice. So, you planted a lot of shrubs and trees on the farm. Yeah. The, any special thing that, you know, was worth sharing? Yeah, well, we are in a national park, so there are trees here that are planted then and uh, they're specific so we ask the park to tell us what trees we should plant and the idea is bio-intensive you know biological intensive is yeah. to like put a lot of uh, ecological uh, things so we planted like 3,000 trees on the farm and we did a pond so it's like biodiversity zones and yeah we're pretty happy because it also gives uh, beauty to the farm and we like trees you know so yeah yeah, and the old trees are really beautiful, eh? Yeah. You see this one there, and this one here is really big. Like yeah, even we back have home, huge uh, oak, oaks, like two hundred year oaks. Oaks yeah. trees. Yeah. yeah, back home we don't. They're different. Different, yeah. Yeah. That's what I like when I come here: the ecology and the, the landscape, the roads, the just the buildings. It's so it's old. It's older. Everything yeah. is like older. 
Yeah. But we have to we have to preserve it because it's fragile, you know. Right. Yeah. You've you've lived in uh, the U.S. for a few years. Yeah. Do you see that this is kind of what you know? Is this something that's really beautiful from here, and you want to keep it, or like the old I mean, world? Like to change the world, you know, like you need uh, you need something, and I think in France, what we have more than in other places is like the food. So there's really it's in the culture, you know. So. I think we can change this way in France because people are engaged in this, you know, in food. Yeah. It's really important for them. It's the good so, food revolution. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, last stop, I want to see the tools because there's a tool demo yeah. here at the farm. Okay, so here we are at the barn at the farm. But Terratech came to do a demo, so there's a lot of stuff here that are not ours. But uh, this is ours, so it's the BCS. We have two power hours because this one is too heavy. But here in France, like we didn't know about tools because we're like kind of the only ones doing this. So we had to try different yep. ones. But this is way better. It's less heavy. And then we have all the BCS tools. Um, I know, Jim, you know the names. Yeah. <laughs> in English. Yes. And then you have these amazing wheelbarrows that we're doing a, a demo trial for the, yeah. the wheelbarrows of Terratech. It's really interesting. And what about the, your tool wall? You want to show yeah, us your we, tool Yeah, we wall? can show the, the tool wall. <clears throat> so yeah, I remember when I visited JM in 2018, I went to Dubois Renovation and I took a lot of tools in my uh, luggage. So this, in, I took it in the plane <laughs> and I'm really happy because it's amazing. It does a lot of weeding uh, for free. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's organized. It's like lean farming. So for us, it's really important to have tools, but the right tools and not too many of them so that it's clear, it's organized and we can be efficient in, uh, in our work. You have the classic broad forks from France? Yeah. Kind yeah, of this one is from Brittany. It's, um, it's a guy who can do any broad fork you want. So like, they're really, really good quality. La Forge Saint-Aubin. La Forge Saint-Aubin, shout out. Thanks. Shout out to uh, Grelin. <laughs> yeah, André Grelin and, and Grelinet. Nice. Different, different. Uh, we're not used to having these shovels also. It's kind of, these are scooping shovels. And do you, know, do you have this? It's for Rumex. Yeah, we don't have Rumex. Uh, us, we have Rumex. <laughs> we know that plant. <laughs> okay, interesting. And then this connects to the wash pack house. And that was the design that I helped with here. Yeah. So it's an old barn. It's How old is the barn? I don't know how old it, it is because last track of that, it's like 18, 19th century, but maybe it goes back beyond, but 15, we don't really know. Yeah. Because it has been rebuilt. Designs. This is really nice. Yeah, and we, we, we saw that this design of roof is different from the other roof, which is weird, you know. So, I mean, I guess it's pretty old, yeah. So, yeah, remember when it, there was dirt everywhere and you would uh, climb on the ladder? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, there was nothing here, so we had to work a lot to, to make that happen. And So, this is really inspired by what we do at the FQT farm. You see yeah. that everything is movable. You can wash your walls, you have a different cold rooms, you have the bubbler, everything's on wheels, mm -hmm. and it's been working good for you. Yeah, it's been great, really efficient work. And we're really happy with the, comment you dis ça? The harvest containers? The, yeah, the, the harvest containers. Like, it, it took a while, you know, to have the right, uh, right containers, right tools, but uh, right now we, we're good, that's it. We did it, so, with the help of Babat and Vanessa also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So honestly, friends, being able to show you this for me is so, so special. Uh, visiting and touring and traveling has been a big part of my life. It's been a big part of my learning in farming and market gardening. And so to be able to share some of the things that I've 
been, you know, blessed to visit. It's really exciting for me. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope, I hope things are growing. Je vous revois la semaine prochaine. Je vous dis à bientôt. JM out. <laughs> <laughs>